Greetings and salutations folks and welcome once again as always to another helping of Mr H's Hot Pot. You join me today outside the former home of the late great Fred Dibner, located on 121 Radcliffe Road in Bolton. Now we've not come to take a look at Fred's home today, I've done that in a previous video. If you haven't seen that video already, I'll put a link up now for you and I'll put some links at the end of this video. What we've come to take a look at today is the former boozer of Fred Dibner, which is not too far away from where he used to live. It's about 10 minutes walk from his home in front of me. So that's what we're going to do now, what Potters. We're going to leave Fred's home behind and take a look at Fred's former boozer. However, Hot Potters, I can't turn down the opportunity just to have a quick peek at Fred's former yard to see how it's changed since I was last here. Over about two years ago now, back then it was owned by Leon Poser, who kindly let me and my good friend Mike take a little nosy around the former yard of Fred in his shed and things like that. Since then it's been sold, I believe in 2021, it was sold in February 2021, so almost exactly two years ago, and the new owner has more or less kept it as is, but obviously adapted it for their own use. I'll just take a quick butchers along the fence, because we must remember that this is no private property. So if you do come here to take a look at Fred's former property, just try and be a bit respectful. And there is his Fred's old shed. And just to the left of that tree though, is where Fred's famous mine shaft used to be. And over there we have Fred's chimney that he built with his own hands. Good to see that this yard is getting used. I'm sure that's what Fred always wanted it to become a workshop and be used. Building shunts stand empty hot potters they were built to be used. Right then let's push on to Fred's old boozer shall we? Well hot potters we're now approaching what was once Fred's former boozer. Like I say it's just about a 10 minute walk up from where he used to live on Radcliffe Road and the pub's name used to be called the Lever Bridge Inn and unfortunately, work's already commenced on converting this former public house into flats. That's why I wanted to get here and document this, because on the 12th of last month, planning permission was indeed approved. But it seems either they've started very quickly or they expected it to go through. As I say, this was a former public house that Fred used to drink in. There's many tales of him coming down here in his steamroller Betsy and parking up and nipping him for a pant. I personally can't see him doing that unless he'd been somewhere else and he decided to pull up here. Right then we'll whip the camera around and take a look at this public house shall we. And here it is folks this is the Lever Bridge Inn which will soon be converted into flats or dwellings as the planning application stated. And this is where Fred, back in the day, used to come for a pint. It's just my luck that they're delivering a load of breeze blocks on the day that I've decided to come here and shoot this video. But we'll try and get some shots of what this looks like. And I do have some period photographs of what it would have looked like when Fred used to drink here. And we'll just see what we can do because as I said, they're having a delivery and I don't want to get in the way of builders. The pub's sat in the shadow of the Dursa Lever Bridge. And that's very Fred-esque that, isn't it? I can understand why he chose to drink here. That bridge was built in 1842 and used to carry the Bolton to Bury railway line. Or Bury, as we say, in Wigan. yeah back in the day 
Fred would have enjoyed a pint in that very pub. I'll put a shot in there for you of what this pub would have looked like back in Fred's day. And as you can see, it was very open back then. Anyway, I'll cross the road and we'll take a look at it from that point there and hopefully we'll get a better shot of it and here we go so that's a bit better now back in Fred's day that fence in there where that fella's just walking through that wasn't there it was all open but the doors and the frontage remain basically the same It's sad and a sign of the times that pubs are closing. Well, that's down to two things, really. Number one, economics. And number two, these days when you go into a pub, it's full of young lads trying to prove themselves. You didn't get any of that back in Fred's day, did you? But yeah, very soon, this pub will be no more. It will just be a set of flats. And here's the other entrance way, stroke exit. But probably, Fred would have nipped down back in the day and scooted off back up there. To go and make his way home. Admittedly, he spent a lot of time in this pub after his first divorce from his first wife, Alison. And he does talk about that a little bit in the documentary series, which I'll put in for you now. Looking back on it, Fred Dibner, the Bolton steeplejack, reckoned the time after his divorce the worst in his life. Like, living here all alone, uh, it weren't much fun, really. I'd come home and put my pie in the oven and put the kettle on and watch a bit of the news and try and keep the time for going to the pub as late as possible. More often than not, it ended up like somewhere around about 8 o'clock and roll down the pub and join the other divorced characters in a similar situation. I soon realised that you couldn't go on like that forever or you would become just another bloke who props the bar up down the pub, you know. We, not a lot to show for your life here uh, on this planet. Fortunately for us, he didn't spend too much time in the pub and he sort of got his act together and moved on. Right then, it's a little bit busy around this area with these guys putting scaffold up. It's a good job I came today, otherwise it would have been completely covered, the facade, in scaffold. So I'm going to whip the camera around now and I'll wrap this video up I think. Well folks that'll just about do it for today. Hope oh, you've enjoyed today's video taking a look at Fred's former boozer here in Bolton not too far away from where he used to live. I'm going to get off now because these guys they thought I was from the doll filming <laughs> so obviously they're working on the sly but hey, well, they're a good set of lads. It's a shame that that pub's going but that's just the way things go. Now before I zip off back to Wigan in the old jalopy, I'd just like to share with you a story that's beer related regarding Fred Dibner. Back in the late 80s, early 90s, he got the opportunity to advertise Greenall Whitley beer. They decided they wanted him to be the face of their bitter because sales of bitter at the time was dropping and they thought get a good working class hero like Fred Dibner as the face of our bitter and it'll sell. So they ran this campaign on the side of buses and on these great big huge billboards that used to stand on the side of houses and shops and things like that, if you remember them back in the day, with Fred holding a pint of bitter and the words emblazoned across the top, right said Fred. Obviously alluding to 
the pop band that was quite popular at the time, right said Fred. Now the only problem with this was that Greenall Whitley ran this across the North West, but at the time, in the Fred Dibner documentaries that were being shown on the BBC, he was always seen coming out of a Tetley's pub. And the executives at Greenall Whitley weren't too pleased about this, so they rang up Fred's agent and asked basically what was going on, why was he sabotaging the campaign that they'd paid good money for. So his agent put the phone down and quickly rang Fred up and said, I've had the execs of, from Greenall Whitley's on the phone and they're wanting to know why you're always coming out of a Tetley's pub in your documentaries. And first of all, he was a little bit cagey about it and he said in that Lancastrian Boltonian drawl, well, just because I've signed up for it, I didn't realise I had to drink the stuff for the rest of my life. Anyway, he pushed him on it, his agent, and finally Fred said, I don't drink it because it tastes like Nat's piss. And uh, he was a bit too honest there, wasn't he, really? Needless to say, they soon dropped that advert and apparently you can still get beer mats with Fred's picture on and the words, right said Fred. And I think it's been turned into a t-shirt as well, you can get that online. So if anybody out there fancies that, just look it up on the old Google. Right then, that will just about do it for today. I'm going to head off now, as I say, back in the old jalopy to Wigan and edit up all this footage ready for your edification. So what, Potters? Until the next time, from myself, Mr H, here in Bolton, it is bye-bye for now.